What first got you involved? Honestly, I'd be lying if I said anything but the prospect of making a lot of money. <laughs> I was just, uh... You may know me as Nopora73. My girlfriend interviewed a bunch of people who are working on Bitcoin privacy. I would like to provide some context to it. I wrote a blog post called Anonymous Bitcoin and in that blog post I outlined my vision of how Bitcoin can become anonymous and what are the key projects behind it. In this privacy series we interviewed the people behind these key projects so you can get cutting edge information on what's going on and who are working on these things. Um, this is Bitcoin privacy interview series. There are no altcoins. <clears throat> so the projects are CoinJoin, Neutrino, um, CoinShuffle, ZeroLink, Confidential Transactions, Bulletproofs, Value Shuffle, Schnorr Signatures. This interview with Shinobi Monkey is going to be about the value of privacy and the rest of the interviews, the projects, what the rest of the interviews are going to be about. This is going to be a warm up that frames the rest of the interviews. So I hope you can get some value out of it. <laughs> Wallet Wasabi coming soon. Hey, and welcome everybody. Welcome to Cyberpunks 101. Today, we have the mysterious Shinobi. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing just fine now that I got some coffee in me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people, you need this coffee. Uh, so, like we saw, well, I spoke to him earlier, so we're going to keep it uh, the lingo as Bitcoin newbie lingo so that everybody understands. All right, so let's dive right into it. Tell mm -hmm. us, Shinobi, a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, for the most part, I try to keep private, but uh, I've, I've been in the Bitcoin community for about four or five years now. I got here around late 2013. And uh, for the most part, I've just kind of stuck to the community side of things. Like um, <clears throat> I'm a moderator over at the Bitcoin core Slack and I run a small chat server where, uh, you know, people just kind of come and you know, shoot the shit or talk the more technical side of things. And you know, I'm honestly just kind of trying to help uh, the propagation of like accurate information in the space. Because when I first got here, it was probably a year, a year and a half until I really wrapped my head around everything with like all the information kind of just scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what first got you involved into Bitcoin? <clears throat> Honestly, I'd be lying if I said anything, but the prospect of making a lot of money. <laughs> let's just say, uh, uh -huh. let's just say uh, before Bitcoin, uh, I was I would classify myself as a wage cuck. <laughs> All right, everybody was in for the money. You're right, in for some green. Um, in terms of privacy, seeing that you're extremely pr private person, um, why do you think it's important? Well, honestly, because if, if you don't have privacy or the ability to kind of select what you're going to share with people, then you don't really have any choice over how you're going to engage with the world around you. Like, you know, being able to keep something to yourself is, uh, it's, I really think, important to not only peace of mind, but also your safety, your ability to kind of navigate the world socially if literally everything about you was just laid bare for anybody to see. Hmm. But that's what's going on right now. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about the case of Facebook and a number of companies are threatening to pull away from it. You know, your information is always out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people out there really got their heads spinning on their shoulders about that. But I mean, it's like, that's kind of something you know, I've just been waiting for it was a matter of time in my mind. And it's, oh, it's yeah. kind of, it's one of those trade offs that you, you don't really have a way around making unless you kind of want to sacrifice a lot of utility in your life. 
Because mm. I mean, at the end of the day, they use it to find more about you to, you know, personalize your page. But at the same time, it can go into malicious hands and cause more problems. With that being said, I recently started watching the series on Netflix. I don't know if you know The Dark Net. Have you seen um, it? No, I haven't. I've, it's actually been a little while since I've popped Netflix on. Huh. Okay, it's an interesting series. Um, but given that the havoc and the malicious activity that the Dark Net has, do you think it's worth it to keep it going? I mean, I think it's... I'm not really sure whether I'd say it's worth it, but I just think it's impossible to stop. I mean, mm -hmm. black markets are, I think, just an inherent inevitability when you have institutions in the world telling people what kind of economic activity they can and can't partake in. I mean, it's kind of just human nature. If somebody wants to do something, they're they're going to do it, no matter what kind of roadblocks you try and put in front of them. Hmm. So you don't think there's a way that you could control all the sick things that happen down there? I mean, I think there's things you can do to try to minimize the scope of it and the damage of it. But I mean, like to kind of jump to the real world real quick. I mean, when you look at the black market in meat space, so to say, I mean, mm -hmm. some like some economists estimate that it's as large or bigger than the GDP of the United States and could mm -hmm. potentially employ you know, anywhere between a third and two thirds of the people on the planet at any given time. And, you know, not just explicitly illegal things, but, you know, unlicensed businesses, uh, activity that's not being taxed and so on. Right, right. Huh. All right. Um, we did start a couple of interviews with Adam and Ethan and other people involved in other projects. So we just like your insights on three of the projects. So the first one would be Join Market. Your mm -hmm. opinion of it? I mean, honestly, I'm really impressed with it. I mean, from you know what I'm aware of in the space, it's really the first actual usable implementation of a coin join and a way to achieve privacy on the main chain. And I think I think it was really interesting the way Belker kind of had that aha moment and kind of monetized it through the creation of a marketplace where people are paying for the liquidity. But mm -hmm. my one worry with Join Market, and we, we kind of saw this over the, the last six months or so with the fees spiking and the spam attacks, is that when you have a very, um, let's say, stressed fee market, it really starts to undermine the utility of it because you know the the fee you're paying to actually mix things just goes up exponentially. So it's the cost of having to do the transaction that's a, an issue for you. I mean, in the in the long term, <clears throat> because of just the the way it does successive rounds on the main chain. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the other project, Point Shuffle. Mm hmm. Honestly, I, I'm not really too familiar with Coin Shuffle, but like the the one thing that kind of it, it makes me a little hesitant when I look at uh, implementations of mixing is mm -hmm. the anonymity set being large enough and the the network level of things, and that's the kind of why. Or I'm sorry, but you know that, that's kind of why. Set? Yeah, Define. like um, pretty much the set of people that you're hiding in when, when you kind of mix your coins to obscure yourself. Okay. And that's kind of what I think was the, the most ingenious uh, part of Join Market to kind of go back to that is when you incentivize it monetarily like that, you have a large pool of liquidity that's consistently being involved in mixing things. And so you have a, a much larger anonymity set than something that's kind of just like here and then we're done. Okay, so with coin shuffle, I guess that's not the case. Well, I'm like I said, I'm not really too familiar. Too familiar. All right. Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. Uh, dandelion. That I'm actually really excited about. Okay. Because uh, one of the, that's one of the the things that kind of worries me most in the the near to short term uh, regarding privacy is the the network level of things, which I think is 
probably a, a more difficult side of things than <clears throat> mixing things on chain. Mm. And, you know, we, cause we already have the, I believe six second delay um, in transaction relay on Bitcoin core to kind of try to stagnate the propagation of the network and prevent people from doing timing attacks to trace it back to the original origin node. And I mm. think adding the, like a, a more complex mixing level on how transactions are relayed peer to peer would be a huge improvement on trying to, you know, screen people's privacy on the network level. All right. So you any disadvantages that you see on this one? Well, I mean, the one that kind of jumps out is just obviously whenever you kind of introduce something to delay and obfuscate the origin of a transaction relaying, you're going to see higher times for it to propagate through the network. And so this might kind of come with a, uh, I guess, an experience degradation for users who just want to hit the button and see that transaction propagated across the network as fast as possible. But personally, I think the trade-off for that is well worth it to have better ease of mind regarding privacy. Okay, fair enough. Um, with regards to the future of Bitcoin, what do you hope to see? Progress left, yeah. <sighs> Honestly, I would really like to see confidential transactions get to the point where it could be safely put in the main chain without mm -hmm. uh, fear of secret inflation. But to be honest, I, I kind of walk with the mentality right now that it's just never going to happen because oh. I, I do think, and, and not, not for technological reasons, it's just well, when you get into that level of privacy, I think that's going to be a very contentious thing. Like we, we've seen many statements relayed secondhand um, from Jihan Wu being very worried and, and against that level of privacy being implemented on chain because right now he's kind of able to go to the Chinese government and and say, hey, if you want to see anything, like you can just ask and I can show you where all the dots connect. And I think that level of obscurity would kind of change um, his position regarding his government. And also it's, I'm not really sure how many users out there really want it. Because one of the, like when I first got in this space, one of the big things or prevalent attitudes that I saw was that we'll be able to have a system that obscures things to a decent degree of privacy for individuals, like people just working their jobs and paying their bills, but have a very high degree of transparency for larger institutions like governments or major corporations. Mm -hmm. And you throw something like confidential transactions in the mix that just completely throws that out the window. And uh, but I, I mean, you want it, but you don't want it. It, it seems more like a plus, <laughs> but I mean, personally, I, I'm all for it as long right. as the the technological issues are worked out. I'm just kind of hesitant to say that the network at large will want it and that we'll actually have consensus for it if a proposal um, is ready in the near term to actually deploy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what about general users? When do you hope that persons like me, who are not really well versed in Bitcoin usage, when do you think we'd be able to use that? I mean, really, it just it comes down to, from my understanding, the, the mathematics of how it works, because like there's still the potential that that cryptography is broken. And if the the crypto being used to blind the amounts is broken, mm -hmm. then you would effectively be able to print Bitcoins out of thin air and nobody would be able to know because the amounts are obfuscated. And so while the, you know, it's a huge boon to privacy until there's a very high degree of certainty that issue is solved. I don't think it's worth the risk of undermining the, the finite supply of Bitcoin oh. because that's the core value proposition of things in a macroeconomic scale from where I stand. Well, yeah, but you just said that is a possibility you can make Bitcoins out of thin air. I always thought that it's finite, like you just said. 
Well, that? yes, but um, pretty much confidential transactions. Um, it's it's pretty much a very narrow zero knowledge proof to kind of prove that what is inputs in the transaction is equal to the outputs. So it kind of mathematically zeros it out so that you can know without seeing the actual amounts that you know everything is as it's supposed to be, like nobody's printing coins out of thin air. But if you were able to find uh, cryptographic collisions in the cryptography used for that, then you would effectively be able to kind of trick it, that. You would be able uh... to make coins out of thin air but have it cryptographically look to the outsider like everything is fine. And I think the risk of that, as much as the privacy would be improved, it's just like, that's not worth the risk for me. Okay. All right, so hopefully everything gets concrete before the future generation gets to use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, privacy is, is really a, uh, it's a race, in my opinion, because the, I think the larger the the amount of people using Bitcoin and the, the more it kind of digs into society at large, I think it's going to be harder to be to push for more extreme privacy like that because people will run out of the woodworks and scream terrorists, pedophiles, <laughs> criminals. And I think a lot of people would kind of just buy into that narrative because it's, you know, that's pretty much the, the narrative used to sell totalitarian nonsense all across the world. That is true. That is true. Well, thank you for your time, Shinobi. It's been a pleasure. I do hope mm -hmm. we have more conversations with you in the future. All right. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Uh, it was nice talking to you. Thanks. Cyberfunks, guys, we're out. Wallet Wasabi, coming soon. What's the point of that, you're asking? That's pointless. Why would you two people want to lock their payments together? The answer is privacy, right? The answer is because it makes it more confusing to a person reading the payment 